Shalom to the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. Uh, today, topic, Unknown caller. Uh, we're going to deal with the ceremonial laws. I find it quite fitting to deal with the ceremonial laws um, because we're in our 12th now. And as we uh, continue on, we will soon after this month, we're soon going to get into our Passover. So um, dealing with the ceremonial laws, we're just going to go into the basic feast days that uh, we are to um, acknowledge and do throughout the year. Uh, we're going to start off in Exodus, though, because I want to kind of set this thing up uh, in a way that uh, it categorize itself in order per se okay in order per se and in dealing with the ceremonial laws you know we also have to understand that uh that the heavenly father uh set these things as law you know something that we have been neglecting over the years because you know here in america it wasn't taught to us you know here into here in the uh Christian era of all of the churches and the the dominant the, the uh, dominations and things like that throughout the quote unquote Christian faith, uh, they never point out the feast days of the Lord that is in the Bible. Never, you know. Um, only when we come into the understanding and knowledge of ourselves and of uh, our book, you know, that's when we start to acknowledge the feast days that the Heavenly Father gave to us. So with that being said, I'm going to go to, uh, let's get into, I'm going to go to Exodus real quick and just read. Uh, Exodus 23. 23 and 14. Let me start in Exodus 23 and 14 real quick. And let me share this screen. And go back. Go back and share the screen real good. All right. So we're going to start in Exodus chapter 23. Just to give an overall of what the heavenly father commanded us to do. And then from there, uh, I'm gonna start with the Sabbath day, which is a holy convocation. You know, every week we are to uh, acknowledge this really holy day and set it aside as the most high has told us to. And he said he'll set that as a sign between, you know, him and us, meaning the children of Israel. So it's a very sacred day. It's a very uh, special day that the, that the Heavenly Father holds dear and gave to the children of Israel. And we should recognize that day and show enough respect that the Heavenly Father thought of his children, the children of Israel, to give us this special day. No other nation. No other nation. He said the children of Israel, and he's not given this Sabbath to no other nation. Now, once we come into power, then we're going to press this upon the other nations as law, as not only as a universal law, but as world law. The whole world will be representing, will be, I'm sorry, will be um, respecting the Sabbath day. So I'm going to go into the Sabbath day and then from there, uh, I'm going to make other episodes going into the other feast days that follow throughout the year. Uh, Exodus chapter 23 and verse 14. Three times thou shalt come. I'm sorry. Three, three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee, 
in the time appointed of the month of of the month Abib. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. So keep that in mind. It says that none shall come before me empty, meaning that you have to bring something towards these feast days. Okay. You just can't show up and say, I'm here to celebrate and, uh, you know, and carry on and, and, you know, with the sisters and brothers, you know, you have to bring something. And he's going to re reiterate it, reiterate that as we continue to read certain scriptures as well. Uh, verse 20, Exodus 23 and verse 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feet, I'm sorry, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labor out of the field. Three times in a year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Okay, so three times. Three feasts out of the whole year mandatory for all males to come to this feast. Keep that in mind. Now, let's say, you know, a couple of brothers know about it but don't want to show up. You know what? That's going to be on them, and they got to answer for that during their judgment. Okay, so as long as they, as long as we put it out there and they know about it, then it is up to them. It's on their, it's on their books whether they not whether they choose to do it or not. But the Lord said, three times in a year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord thy God. Uh, verse eighteen: Thou shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread meaning that during the time that when you make the sacrifice the heavenly father said that this holy day which would be unleavened bread which also is the passover there there's not supposed to be any leaven you know brought to this feast or even in the bread no no yeast no vinegar uh, and other items and ingredients that makes the bread rises or ferment any of the uh, items that you bring into this particular feast. The Heavenly Father says, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. So as we get more into the Passover, then that scripture is going to make it's going to be clear okay and i'll make sure i bring that the scripture back up you know once we get into the ordinances of the passover uh verse 19 the first of the first fruits of thy late of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the lord thy god thou shalt not seed a kid in his mother's milk and i went over that during the um dealing with the dietary laws and when it says thou shalt not see a kid in his mother's milk meaning that a calf a calf that is breastfeeding that's still on the milk of the mother you know that calf is not supposed to be eating uh eaten or uh sacrificed because it still is in its milk in his mother's milk that's all that means there um i went over that like I said, a couple of episodes back on Torah Tuesdays, just dealing with the dietary laws. Uh, that's verse 19. And uh, okay, so just want to give that a little play. Uh, uh, just want to go into that uh, before I go into the Sabbath day. But I'm going to get Deuteronomy real quick. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 16. Uh, Deuteronomy 16 and 16. 
uh, three times. Once again, it's going to re reiterate itself back. We're still in the Torah. We're just dealing with Exodus, which is one book, going back to Deuteronomy, just to solidify that this is what the Heavenly Father requires of the children of Israel. So uh, 16 and 16. Uh, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Keep that in mind. Uh, verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able. Every man, meaning woman as well, shall give as he is able. If you have just a little, give that little that you have. If you have an abundance, give extra of what you want to give. There's nothing, scriptures tell you that arms covers uh, a, a multitude of sins. So just keep that in mind. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he gave, which he giveth thee. All right. So be fair about it. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, be fair about it. So now, before I go into the Sabbath, um, not going to go in great details with the Sabbath, but I am going to bring out some points that's very important. Uh, that would be very important to um, very important to point out uh, this dealing with the Sabbath. Um, there's a lot of scriptures and there's a lot of historical events that took place uh, of the Heavenly Father just giving us that day of rest. Um, and uh, as you continue to read more about the Sabbath and bring out uh, more uh, historical events as well as what's happening today i mean you have to put the sabbath in that perspective as well because a lot of people are not uh, upholding the sabbath on the correct day like i said that's another lesson but they're not upholding the sabbath you know based upon the roman catholic uh teachings you know they have taken the seventh day which is on the saturday and have take putting it on a sunday the first day of the week you know, also, you know, like I said, not to really get into it because this is just Torah, Torah Tuesdays. So I just want to read the law. But we also have sisters and brothers dealing with the lunar calendar law, meaning that uh, the seventh day could fall throughout the week or any day of the week of the seven days. But once again, don't want to get into that. We're going to get into just the Sabbath itself, what it represents, who it was given to, and also a, just a little brief uh, information on what we are to do during the Sabbath, uh, the seven-day Sabbath. So let's go back. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Let's go back here. Let's go back here. Let's um let's get first Corinthians. Let's get first Corinthians um eleven and I think it's thirty. So with that being said, you know, about the Sabbath and how uh, the seven day Sabbath is supposed to be represented on that particular day. Uh, all set aside, the Most High is going to put everything in order once he comes. But as the chosen people, the children of Israel, as we do recognize the Sabbath and then do the things that is required of us on the Sabbath, you know, it's still within the law. It's still within the righteous judgment of your walk. Whether you keep it 
like you say, on a Saturday, or if you keep it throughout your weeks or however you come up with that. Now, like I say, I'm I'm not saying being advocate about it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the Sabbath alone, rep- understanding the Sabbath, understanding the ordinance within the Sabbath, that's what I'm more concerned about. So with that being said, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. And we shall not be condemned with the world. See, so understanding it, rehearsing the righteous acts of the, of the Sabbath day is within itself the guidance within the laws. Verse 33, therefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. Verse 34, and if any man hunger, let him eat home. See, let him eat at home. If we agree to disagree, Mosai says, any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemn. Uh, unto condemnation okay meaning strife with one another meaning having that strife with one another based upon the doctrine that you may believe in and that i may believe in you know what i'm saying as far as what day would the seventh day be on so i'm gonna read that again it says if any man hunger let him eat at home that ye come not together unto com- unto condemnation listen to what he said now and the rest i will set in order when i come this is the heavenly father saying that he's going to set things in order and not only just the sabbath day but i'm talking about all of the feast days because you have uh camps that's uh, uh rehearsing the righteous acts of the ceremonial laws and the feast days on different days but the heavenly father says, it said, and the rest I will set in order when I come. We know in part, we prophesy in part. We have to keep that in mind as well. But we do know that we are the children of Israel. And we do know and understand that these laws, statutes, and commandments have to be uh, fulfilled. They have to be conducted with one another, period. We know that. You know, we have to come under the banner of the commandments. So he said the rest he will set in order when he comes. Okay, so uh, let me get one more scripture on that. Let's get Mark. Mark uh, 13 and 31. Mark 13 and 31. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. As we see us rehearsing the righteous acts now, as we see us understanding the laws and the commandments that the Heavenly Father left our forefathers, which passing down to us. Okay. He says, His words shall not pass away. Verse uh, 32. No, that's all I want. That's all I want. Just, just, just that verse there. Yeah. So his words will not pass away. So just keep that in mind, Israel. You know, like you say, we have our differences, but um, one thing we do know, we will come under the banner of, and the ordinances of, you know, Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Period. You know, nobody's gonna have their opinion about nothing when he comes, along with his angels. So let's get into the Sabbath day. Let's get into the Sabbath day. Um, I'm going to start off at, um, start off in Leviticus chapter 23. Start off in Leviticus chapter Let's start with Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. Okay. 
Okay. So, you know, once we're going into the Sabbath day, like I said, I'm just going to read the law. Uh, I may throw a few pre precepts in there um, just to, uh, you know, make things a little bit more clear. Precept on, pre on precept, line upon line, uh, here a little and there a little. So uh, we're just going to start off with that. So Leviticus 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even those are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. Now, when we say thou should do no work therein, now we have to understand that the Heavenly Father has set this day as a day of rest. So when he says no work, he truly means that that is the day that you're supposed to be meditating, praying upon him. Right now, we know that in these uh, captivity, throughout these captivities, even the captivity we're in today, you know, a lot of things uh, are just not right within this society. You know, they don't respect the seventh day, the Sabbath day. And uh, we know that a lot of things take place within the Sabbath day. You know, now I've, I've had many of people tell me as I explain the Sabbath to, to them and what's supposed to be done on this particular day. They always tell me and, if, you know, Saturdays, they say, well, this that's the biggest time I make my money. You know, people who own businesses, you know, uh, people, you know, just, just ordinary people. You know, a lot of people tell me, well, that's the only time I have to do my grocery shopping. You know, because, well, the only time I got to go to the store, the only time I got to. Uh, uh, have that I can, um, you know, go out and be entertained throughout the whole week that I've worked, you know, they, you know, all kinds of stories, but, um, it's a hard thing for a lot of people, unfortunately, but it's, it's it, like I say, it's, it, it's, it's to a point where it comes with that sacrifice, you know, and it comes with that sacrifice, the information that you need to make that sacrifice. That's what makes it easy. Once you have the information, you know, and then you put your faith in the information, which is coming out of the Bible, you know, the first five books. Right. And then you start to read about the history of how our people, you know, number one, a lot of our people. Uh, been injured, you know, been beaten because of trying to uphold the Sabbath as well as trying to talk to others to uh, respect the sabbath day a lot of our people have been imprisoned throughout history a lot of our people have actually been murdered for this particular holy day that the heavenly father set aside so when we go into this you know we have to go into this looking at this is a law that blood has been shed innocent blood has been shed to uphold the commandments of the most high god and that's throughout history. And before I go any further, let me go back. Let me go back. I was supposed to go to Genesis first. Let's go to Genesis and set the, set the scene first before we go to Leviticus. Sorry about that. I had got my uh, Genesis chapter 2. Uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Ah, Let me read that first before we go into any further, before we go to Leviticus. Uh, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his rest. I'm sorry, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rest on the seventh day from all his works, which he had made. OK, so now that's why the seventh day is considered a day of rest, because the heavenly father made the, the heavens and the earth. Right. And the host therein. So everything that we take advantage of every day, the air, 
the trees, the sun, the moon, the stars. You know, the Most High had implemented all those things within six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Uh, verse three. And God blessed the seventh day. Now, that is the key right there. This sacrifice that we're making and understanding and upholding the Sabbath day is a blessing. It's a blessing to every Israelite, right, that recognizes the seventh day that the Heavenly Father set aside from all other days. But he give us that day of rest, plus he give us that blessing behind it. Something that we have to keep in mind when we're making that decision. OK, it says, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his works, which God created and made. Right. So whatever he created, and made, meaning the animals, you know, uh, you know, insects, the whole nine, the whole nine. Right. But he blessed this day. He sanctified this day, set it apart. And he given it to the children of Israel. Okay. Keep that in mind. Once again, he has given that day to the children of Israel. These are the generations of the heavens and the, and the earth when they were created. In the day the Lord, in the, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Okay. The earth and the heavens. So just keep that in mind on the sabbath day if you just go out on the sabbath day and just sit and just rest and observe the sky you know just observe the trees just observe what he has created you know it'll give you an inner peace and a sense of peace okay so now let's go back to leviticus twenty-three, and um i'm gonna go back to verse one I'm going to start it from the top. <clears throat> and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even those are my feast. Okay. So now I want to go back to Leviticus. Um, actually, I'm going to come down. Verse verse three six days shall work be done but the seventh day is the sabbath of rest a holy convocation ye shall do no work therein it is the sabbath of the lord in all your dwellings so no matter where we find ourselves in all our dwellings verse four these are the feasts of the lord even holy convocations, which shall, which shall proclaim in their seasons. So we have to understand this too. When we go on over the ceremonial laws, uh, that all of the feast days are done in their season. Just like now, we're in the winter season because this is the 12th month of our Hebrew calendar. But... We have to go according to the seasons, the seasons of what feast is coming in, because why? Because the Heavenly Father has set it up that way. This is the reason why he said, These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So all of the feasts, they come in a certain season, a time throughout the year. All right. So with that being said, uh, let me get Exodus. Let's go back to Exodus real quick and read something to you. Let's get Exodus chapter 31 and verse uh, I think it's 12. Exodus uh, chapter 31 and verse 12. Now, like he said, it's supposed to be done in seasons. Not only that, but the Heavenly Father back in Genesis has already told us that it was a day of rest after he 
finish making all the host of heavens, the heavens and the earth that he created. Then he set a certain day, which is the seventh day, aside. Now, he, like I said before, I implemented that he gave it to the children of Israel. He didn't give it to no other nation. Remember, always remember, the Heavenly Father is always going to deal with Israel first and foremost before he deal with any other nation. Any other nation. Okay, let's get that real quick and then I'll come back to um, to Exodus. Uh, let's get the Psalms. Um, let me see. I like my Bible more so than anything. Psalms 147. Yeah, that's it. 147 and... Nineteen. So Psalms 147 and 19, like I said, he, he given this commandment to the children of Israel before any other nation. Psalms 147 and 19, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statues and his judgment unto Israel. Verse 20, he has not dealt so with any nation. See, he has not dealt so with any nation. So from the beginning. When he created the heavens and earth and made that day of rest, which is the Sabbath day, the heavenly father has given that day to the children of Israel first. And then all of the other nations will fall in order according to how the heavenly father wants it or um, set it out to be. Meaning the children of Israel is going to implement the laws, period, to the all nations on the face of the earth. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, which is the law, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So now let's go back to Exodus and find out who the Lord gave. Who the Lord gave uh, this this holy day, this this Sabbath day to? Let's find out. Exodus thirty one and verse twelve. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak all speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. So here we are once again. We brought out Genesis when the, the Sabbath day was first implemented. And now he's telling Moses to tell the children of Israel, Marie 13, speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. I'm going to pause on that. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. I'm going to put a pause on that as well. So this is how we are supposed to be thinking of the Sabbath. It is a sign between the Heavenly Father who created the heavens and earth. And he says, throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that do it sanctify you. What a privilege. What a privilege to understand that the Heavenly Father has given the children of Israel blessings, a true blessed day. So us so that we can recognize him as well as rest for ourselves. Verse 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore. For it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. Now, that's how serious it is. That's how serious it is. And that's how serious we should be taking it. I mean, we stumble. You know, we stumble. Um, you know, like I said, based on the society that we in, we did not, a lot of us didn't grow up knowing this. 
And a lot of the jobs these days, uh, they expect people to come in. They expect their doors to be open on the Sabbath. But that lets you know the times that we're living in, too, as well as the people that's running this country. See, there's no respect of the Sabbath day. A lot of people don't even know of the Sabbath day. And it's a shame because a lot of the people I'm talking about is the children of Israel. But if you think about it, if we would, uh, that's, that, well, that's why Torah Tuesdays and other brothers are sharing this information. Because if you think about it, if we put a halt on buying on Saturdays, now, mind you, the Sabbath comes in Friday night. So you actually have to stop your doings of business Friday evenings when the sun goes down, right? And you're not supposed to purchase um, any or light a fire from the t from Friday evenings, right? All through until Saturday evening when the sun goes down on Saturday that evening. That is considered the Sabbath day. But back to my point, because we that's another lesson that could be getting it going into but back to my point is, if we uphold this, like the Heavenly Father says, uh, she'll surely be put to death. You know, if we recognize it, guess what would happen to this economy? I'm not saying that it will fall, but I tell you this, they will definitely recognize that these people, right, which are the Israelites, are holding back. They're not buying. They're not going to work on, the, on Saturdays. Because they consider, because they represent and also uh, respecting the Sabbath day. Just think about it. That would definitely send a, a sign out to not only uh, whatever country you're living in, but to the whole world. And then they will have to look at this and say, oh, this is the reason why they choosing not to work. They're choosing not to buy. But I'm going to read it again. Verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore. Because why? Because it's a sign between the most high God who created heaven and earth and the children of Israel. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiled it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 15. Six days may work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. That's how the Most High holds this sacred. That the Most High say, I'll put you to death. You know, just not to get lead to the point, stick to the scripture, but you think you may do something or just say i'm going out to the mall and go buy something and you know it that you're not supposed to be buying you know or selling on that sabbath most i say it puts you to death next thing you know car accident boom you're gone now you got that on your books you know you got that on the books when the most high you know resurrect us uh until that judgment seat of his but once again how can you go around it when you when you know of it you know it's hard. I'm not going to kid you. It's, it, it's, when I say it's hard, it's only hard because it hasn't been given to us the proper way. Our laws have not been given to us the proper way. It's been given to us. It has not even been given to us through Christianity, which is a shame because they, quote unquote, say that they love the Lord. But uh, not to get sidetracked. So Mosai says, uh, whosoever doeth any work on the sabbath he shall surely be put to death verse 16 therefore the children of israel shall keep the sabbath to observe the sabbath throughout their generation listen to this for a perpetual covenant for a perpetual covenant that's how the most high looks at his children and looks upon his sabbath day that truly is a blessing Perpetual, meaning forever. Okay, meaning forever. 
that's the covenant that he made us with that sabbath day and then within that sabbath day you know we receive the blessings of our heavenly father verse 17 it is a sign between me and the children of israel forever let me read that again verse 17 exodus 31 and verse 17 it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. It didn't say the whole world. It didn't say the other nation. It didn't say the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, uh, the uh, uh, the Hamites. You know, it didn't say them. It said, right, it is a sign. Now, who can actually call claim on that? Who can call claim that they have there's a sign between the God that created heaven and earth? No other nation, but who he said right here in the Torah. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in the sixth day, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day he rest and was refreshed hmm. think about that and was refreshed verse 18 and he gave Mo and he gave unto moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon mount sinai two tablets of stone i'm sorry two tablets of testimony i'm sorry two tables of testimonies tables of stone written with the finger of your howard okay so now he gave moses a physical thing to bring to the children of israel so if they didn't want to read it you know from moses mouth of not read i'm saying if they didn't want to um accept it from moses mouth then the heavenly father gave him two tablets right gave him two tablets to bring down and say okay i'm telling you what thus said the lord but now i'm giving you a physical uh, uh object to look at as well to say listen this is what the heavenly father ordained us to do and those tablets consist of the ten commandments right so we know that let's go into um exodus 20 and let's see where this Sabbath day falls in under the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20. Exodus 20 and verse 8. Okay. Now, first, I'm going to read verse 7 so that we can use just some clarity. Thou shalt not take the Lord, take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, nor thy maidservant, manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed, understand that, blessed the seventh day, and hollowed it, meaning set it aside. All other days, 
six days, but that seventh day he set aside and he blessed it too. So let's go back. Let's go back to um, let's go back to Exodus 35. Now, with that being said, as a sign between the Most High and the children of Israel, and he gave this only to the children of Israel. Okay, only to the children of Israel. There are stipulations within the Sabbath day that we must carry out. Not only is it a day of rest, but it's a day in which uh, when he said we're supposed to just take a rest of all things. Now, let's find out what is required within this Sabbath day. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, these are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye shall do, I'm sorry, that ye shall do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your inhabitations upon the Sabbath day. So now let's go, let's let's just wrap with that a little bit it says you should not kindle no fire throughout your inhabitations upon the sabbath day meaning that we're not supposed to be cooking that saturday breakfast okay that's what it just simply means we're not supposed to be uh buying or selling or cooking on the sabbath ye shall ye shall kindle no fire now, I had a question that was brought, and um, and I understand how the question is because, you know, we, we start to ramble and thoughts come to our head once we read the law. So it was basically saying, they said, well, what do we, let's say, when it says don't kindle a fire, do that mean that we can't light our furnace? Does that mean that if we find ourselves, let's say, um, uh, camping, and it's cold out that we can't kindle a fire let's see well let's let, let's even say that you know when the children of israel was uh in in the, in the wilderness did they kindle fire you know to keep warm okay that's what it means you know let's not be overly righteous because we know that people back east during the winter time they have to turn on their furnace that's not what it's saying. This is saying when it says thou shalt now kindle uh, no fire throughout your generation, meaning you're not supposed to be cooking, preparing things. Keep that in mind. Now, if you out in the in this, you know, the winter time, you have to kindle a fire to keep warm. But you're not making tea. You're not cooking, you know, whatever it is that, you know, that you want to eat or things like that. That's not what it's saying. You know, you you have to stay warm. I mean, if you find yourself in a situation, like you say, in the desert, they have to kindle a fire to keep warm. That's what it's saying is thou shalt not kindle, meaning cook. Let's get Exodus. Let's see what this is. Exodus chapter 25. Before we go there, let me see if I can bring this other one out. Give me one minute. Give me one minute. Uh, Exodus. Give me one minute, you guys. I'm trying to think of this one scripture. Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel 
there. Ezekiel 20 is one of the precepts I had. Uh, your kingdom on fire. Okay, on the Sabbath. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel. No, that's not the one I want. So I'm going to go back. I'll have that later. I have that later. Let's go back um, about kindling the fire. 35, I'm sorry. Exodus 35. 35 and 1. But that's what that means, Israel. Thou shalt not kindle uh, a fire throughout your generations upon the Sabbath. You know, like I said, once again, that's dealing with cooking. All right. Um, <clears throat> Murray verse uh, four. And Moses spoke unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying. I think that's all I wanted. But anyway, I'm going to read it anyway. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of the willing of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. So now we're getting into uh, something. But I just wanted to make that point about kindling the fire on the Sabbath. And once again, like I said, let's not be overly too righteous now, because. You know, one is, is this someone who's back east dealing with the winter set uh, winter season. You know, they have to keep warm some kind of way. The Heavenly Father is not going to let you sit, sit there and freeze to death. OK. That's saying refrain from cooking on the Sabbath. Uh, I had other scriptures to go into that, too, but I don't want to make this too long. But I think I'll double back on that. Um, but let's go into uh, Isaiah real quick. Go to Isaiah chapter 13. Damn. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, Isaiah 58. 13. I think that's uh, Isaiah 58 and 13. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy own pleasures on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him not doing thy own ways nor finding thy own pleasures nor speaking thy own words then shall thou delight thyself in the lord and will cause thee to ride upon the highest places of the earth these are the blessings that you know that you will receive just by upholding the sabbath day check it out and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. So now the key thing in this is doing thy own ways, finding thy own pleasure. Okay. Doing thy own pleasure and not speaking thy own words. Now you take them two categories, those three right there, write them down and then put in perspective of your life within them. Doing your own pleasure, you know. For years, I know our teachers have been telling us, what's the pleasure of sex? You know, sex is a pleasure. 
So not having sex on the Sabbath day. Doing thy own ways, meaning whatever ways that you find pleasurable, you know, you set those things aside when the Sabbath day comes around. Speaking thy own words, right? Not sitting around like on your, uh, throughout your six days a week of whatever conversation you having, but that particular day you set those conversations aside and you start meditating upon the word and the most high. So these are the regulations that the heavenly father and restrictions restrictions that's within the Sabbath day because it's a day of rest. You know, and remember, he said that this is a sign between me and the children of Israel. Keep that in mind. Definitely keep that in mind. Uh, let me get Ezekiel now. Let me go over to Ezekiel real quick. Just want to bring out a few precepts that I have written down for this. Ezekiel 12. Ezekiel 12, uh, 20 and 12. Moreover, also I gave them a I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. Okay, let's keep that in mind. That read it again. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them. Once again, he's now he, the, the prophet Ezekiel is even given uh, confirming the word of the Most High that he made this Sabbath day uh, a sign between the children of Israel and the Most High God. That they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. But the house of Israel rebelled against them in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despise my judgment, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my and my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. Now, like I said, look at the society we're living in today. Are they not uh, polluting the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, the Saturday? Are they not polluting it? I mean, that that that's the time when Friday nights they start to, they start on Friday nights and they end on Saturday nights. So all between that time, from sundown to Friday, all the way to sundown Saturday, you know, people are out doing, you know, going out to dinner, partying, giving parties, marrying. Uh, having sex, uh, uh, cooking food, you know, you name it. They doing everything under the sun, especially when it comes down to those particular days of the week. But the Heavenly Father said he set that seventh day aside. So as Israelites, we are supposed to recognize, read this law, and then make corrections. Make corrections, Israel. I'm going to start at 13. Uh, again, uh, Ezekiel 20 and verse 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walk not in my way, in my statues, and they despise my judgment, which if a man do, mean which if a man do these laws and commandments, he shall live in them. And my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrath for my name's sake, meaning that he hold back, killing them for his name's sake. And why did he do this? That it shall not be polluted before the heathen. See, he was so mad, but he said, you know what? I can't, I can't destroy the children of Israel. For polluting my Sabbath at this, not at this time, but they will be judged though. Because why? Because the heathens was watching how our great father, the, the most high God, was dealing with us. So it says, but he wrought for his name's sake that it shall not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. See, in whom sight he the meaning that you know what happened. In Egypt, with a great 
We said, with a stretched out arm and with a heavy hand that he brought us out of Egypt, per paraphrasing. Okay, so that's why he held back without destroying us. But this is how sacred he, call, he holds his Sabbath, though. This is how sacred he holds it. Okay, um, I think, do I want that one? Yeah, I'm going to go to 22, Stan Ezekiel. And I want, now I'm going to go to 22 and verse 26. Verse 26, his priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. Once again, going back to that dietary laws. And have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath. And I am profane among them. See, And hidden their eyes from my Sabbath. Meaning that they're not recognizing it. They're not upholding it. But like he said, he said they made, uh, they have not made a difference between the unclean and the clean. Going back to what? my di The dietary laws? Going back to the uh, the laws of, of cleanliness. You know, all of these laws, they have set aside and gone by their way and going the way of how society is conducting themselves. Which the Heavenly Father is angry with that. Totally angry with that. Okay. Let's go to Jeremiah real quick. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, is 17 and I think it's 18. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 18. Let them be comforted that pursue me. I'm sorry. Let them be confounded that pursue me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Okay, with double destruction. Verse 19, thus said the Lord unto me, go and stand in the gates of the children of the people, whereby the king of Judah come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Hear ye the words of the Lord, ye king of Judah, and all of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus said the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden. Understand this. This is what it says. So this is the Heavenly Father is talking to the children of Israel. And he says, thus says the Lord, take no burden to thy, to yourselves. I'm sorry. Thus said the Lord, verse 21. Thus said the Lord, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring in it by the gates of Jerusalem. So the Heavenly Father is telling us that, you know, in rehearsing the Sabbath, that we're, we're no burdens. So the hard week that you had, those six days, when that seventh day of rest starts to come in, that Friday night, no burdens. Set all them burdens aside. Whatever you was going through, just set it aside and just have that one day of rest. You can pick it back up come Sunday night. You know, pick it back up and deal with it, whatever the situation may be. But um, but the Heavenly Father said that going into the Sabbath, that we're supposed to carry no burdens. No burdens. Uh, I'm going to read verse 7, 21 again. Thus uh, said the Lord, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, 
neither carry forth a burden out of your house on the Sabbath day, neither do ye any work, but hollow ye the Sabbath day. Listen, as I command your fathers, see, as he commanded our fathers, okay? But, you know, throughout history, which is 23, goes down to 23, uh, not going to go into that because he said, um, but they obeyed not. So we know that the children of Israel always is in that rebellious state, you know, is in that rebellious state. But uh, yeah, that's 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 what I wanted in, in, in that. But the Heavenly Father says we are not to carry any burdens, you know, when it comes, like I said, when we approach that seventh day of rest, you know, we are not to carry that burden into our uh, our Sabbath. Uh, I just want to leave with one one bit of history, you know, how um, the Sabbath day was such an important day to our people. And, you know, like one, one of the lists I had is said that, uh, you know, a lot of people died, you know, for this Sabbath day. Uh, and it's a recorded event that happened, you know, to our people. Uh, second Maccabees. Let me go second Mac. I'm already there. Let me leave you with this. In second Maccabees. Uh, excuse me, because I like I like my books. Uh, the computer is good, but I like my books. Uh, I want to start at uh, yeah, second Maccabees six and verse five. <clears throat> Is this it? Let me see. Uh, give me one minute. Just make sure I got the right one. Is that seven? Start at verse five. Uh, the altar also was full with profane things, which the law forbids. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath day or ancient, supposed to be feasts, ancient feasts or to profess himself to be a Jew. So this is the during the time of our brothers and sisters during the Maccabees uh, revolt and the Greek empire. So. At that time, it was even banned that we actually keep the Sabbath day or any of the feast days. So during that time, we have to reflect back on our time now. No one is 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 is, um, is prohibiting us from upholding the Sabbath day. I want y'all to keep that in mind. So once you start to go over your your precepts and understand the Sabbath day and how the Heavenly Father. Uh, want us to conduct ourselves, then you got to realize that this is the time to actually put that work in. Nobody's prohibiting us from the Sabbath day. They can care less. So that makes it even better for us to get those blessings from our Father. Keep that in mind. I'm going to skip down. Uh, I'm going to go to 8, verse 8. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen by the suggestions of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifice. And whosoever would not confirm themselves to the manner of the Gentiles shall be put to death. Then might a man have seen the presence of misery. Verse 10. For there <clears throat> were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led around, I'm sorry, openly led around or led around about the city, 
Now, this is this is when, uh, you know, once again, dealing with the law is the eighth day we're supposed to circumcise the males. Well, during this time, the Greeks, they didn't want the children of Israel to obey any of their any of our commandments, including circumcising our children on the eighth day. So they had these two women and what they did was they paraded them around the city. It says for there were two women brought who had circumcised their, their children, whom when he when they had openly led around led round about the city, the babies hanging to their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. So they put them in an open shame. Well, put them, yeah, in an open shame could compared to what they wanted them to do and then they tossed them off the wall and killed them and the child so these are the times that our father i mean that our forefathers was dealing with you know when they was in the greek empire when they was prohibited to uphold these laws and commandments so that is, that's just dealing with the circumcision of our children verse 11 and others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the sabbath day a secret i mean <clears throat> so now they give it another instance where we were not to uphold the sabbath day reverse 11 again and others that had ran together into caves nearby to keep the sabbath day sec secret secretly being discovered by Philip, were all burned together because they had made concession to keep themselves for the honor of the Most High Sacred Day. See, that's when we say that people died to uphold the Sabbath. And now these days, people are just going about freely, just doing whatever they want to do on this holy day. But it's something to keep in mind, Israel. It's something to keep in mind, especially when you come into um, the understanding of the Sabbath. And that's what here on Torah Tuesday, we try to bring out the laws that our people are ignorant of. And this one incident in history, you know, they would actually run into caves just to keep the Sabbath day. And then when this Philip, uh, the Greek, found that they was actually upholding it, you know, he burned everybody up in it. Burned everybody up in it. Just for them trying to keep uphold and keep the, the Sabbath day. Okay. Let me read four. I mean, 13. For it was taken of his greatness, <clears throat> of his greatness when wicked doers are not suffered any longer time, but for with punishment. So they was actually punishing our people for upholding these same commandments that the Christian church is saying is done away with. But like I said before, that's on their books. It's not on ours. You know, we're going to keep pushing and we're going to keep continuing with the word of the most high God, you know, and um, and deliver this message to our people as best as we could and as long as we can. So, um, uh, once again, I'm going to uh, continue on with the uh, ceremonial laws. Uh, that's just a brief going into the Sabbath. And uh, the next one will be, um, I will go into the new moon aspects of, um, of, of, the, of the law. Okay. And uh, with that, I say shalom.